Hello folks, today I'm coming to you from one of my favorite reservoirs. I'm up at French Meadows Reservoir in the Tahoe National Forest. Um, this is a great place to catch brown trout and rainbow trout. I haven't been here yet this year, so I really don't know what to expect. The lake is full. It hasn't been full in a number of years. Um, I'm out here on a prominent point on the backside of the lake. I've got two rods rigged up. I've got this one armed for, you know, standard bait fishing um, with a sliding sinker rig. I'm going to put a night crawler on that one. And I've got this one armed with a Yozuri L minnow, which is basically a sinking uh, minnow bait. It's about oh, a little over two inches long. It's a rainbow pattern bait. So I'm going to toss out uh, a night crawler inflated, and then I'm going to do some fan casting with the Yozuri, and we'll see what happens. Okay, I'm baited up and ready. I got a fat night crawler on there. I got it inflated with air. Um, I'm out on a point, and behind me there's lots of submerged structure. I've seen it when the lake is down. Um, I've caught several nice browns here, including a couple over five pounds, so I'm hopeful that they're, they're going to be cruising here. One of the challenges we have today is it's a full moon, and trout fishing's never at its best during a full moon, but uh, hopefully we'll do well. So let me toss this out, and we'll see if anything's out there that's, uh, that's looking to feed. When soaking bait from the bank, you always want to consider the water temperature and the depth. You don't want your bait sitting in water that is too deep or too cold to hold trout. Okay, on my second cast, I had a nice brown trout come up and hit right below me. I didn't hook the fish, so I'm going to keep on casting. But a couple good points to know when you're plugging like this. You want to fan cast, and because I got a sinking bait, you want to you want to work the depths. But I was right under the surface, and I was ripping the bait a little bit. So let's fire it back out there again and see if that fish will come back. That was really exciting. So what I was doing, you know, they'll hit a minnow bait like this on a steady retrieve. But what I was doing is, is I was going steady, and then I would pop it a couple times. And that fish followed it right up to my feet. He was probably 16, 17 inches long. It was a nice trout. So I probably made a dozen, dozen and a half casts with the Yozuri. Got no more, no more responses. So I'm going to switch up. I'm putting on a uh, chrome and blue quarter ounce cast master. This is a little more appealing to rainbow trout in my experience. So we'll see if there's some rainbows out here. But it was good seeing that brown. Hopefully, uh, hopefully one's going to cruise around here and grab that worm or something. But uh, we'll see if they like this cast master. I've always found cast masters to be deadly spoons for shore casting. They work when you're trolling them too, um, but I've, I've done really well with them casting off the bank. They cast really well, and they've got good action through a variety of retrieve speeds. You can retrieve them pretty fast, or you can just barely slow roll them along. Another great application is you can jig with them. I've been on docks and stuff before where I'm vertical jigging a cast master. They work really well. I've done well like that at like Lake Shasta and different places. But uh, just drop it down, pop it up, pop it up, pop it up, and it really excites the fish. It looks like a dying bait fish, and very often you can generate a strike that way. Okay, we'd seen some fish hitting on the surface. I had two bait rods out, so I switched back to the Yozuri minnow plug, and we got a decent brown here. So I'm going to work my way over here and kind of get the fish up on the shore. I don't have a net, but he, you know, he's 12 inch brown. He's a nice fish. He's a good start to the day. Oh, that's going to be dinner. Feisty. But, uh, my first trout of the year at French Meadows Reservoir. Beautiful brown. That fish is going home for dinner. All right. See if I can catch another one, but, uh, he jumped all over that Yozuri Elmino, a little rainbow pattern. First cast. Awesome. Okay, so there's the, there's the bait I was using. It's a small Yozuri Elmino. It's a slow sinking minnow plug. It's a rainbow pattern. But there's a lesson to be learned by that. We got here early. Um, we weren't catching anything. We had one nice fish chase uh, the Elmino, a larger version. Then I switched to a cast master. No response on that. So I put out two bait rods. Well, I reeled in to check the worm. I got snagged, broke off the hook, 
but all of a sudden a trout ran up and he grabbed the sinker. I couldn't believe it. We didn't get any of that on film, so I thought, well, I, I rebaited up, I put a new hook on, put a new worm out there. And while I was while I was doing that, we saw a couple fish hit on the surface, you know, kind of roll. So I put on another, you know, I put on yellow minnow, which is a smaller version of what I was using before, and first cast. So what I think happened, I think the fish were lethargic first thing in the morning. But now the sun's up, they seem more active, so hopefully we'll catch some more. But uh, don't be afraid to switch from lures to bait and back again, depending on what you see. And when I saw that fish come up and hit the sinker, I felt like they were getting more aggressive. And when I saw a couple of them break on the surface here, it kind of confirmed that. So that worked out. Nothing else, I got dinner, so we'll go from there. We'll be back momentarily. Yakima Bait Company describes Captain Kirk Porter Carrero as the number one guide in Northern California. Captain Porter Carrero specializes in putting his clients on trophy Sacramento River King Salmon. Kirk also offers trips on the Sacramento for epic wild rainbows that range up to 10 pounds. To book your adventure, dial 800-670-4448 or visit sacriverguide.com. Don't know if we got a fish on here or not, but I was setting up another rod and this one just got slammed. Oh yeah, he's there. I'm gonna feed him a little bit of line. This is a big night crawler. So, give the fish a little bit of line. I don't know how well he's got it. I, I was setting up another rod and this one just fell over. And... I suspect he's hooked, but we'll see. I'm gonna reel slowly and when I feel a fish, I'm gonna set. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's some submerged grass down there and I'm in it. I can feel it, but I definitely have the fish. I'm not gonna force him. I'm gonna let him work his way out of it. I think he just came free. No, I can see the weed flex. I can see the trout though. Nice fish. Dang. Oh, no, he's not that big. He'll be a good eater though. Another beautiful brown. Let's see. I'm gonna have to lift this fish. This isn't the optimum way to do this. This is one of the reasons though, I'm using 10 pound fluorocarbon, which a fish can't see, but it really opens you up to landing fish like this. So here we go. And just like that. So there we go, there's fish number two. We're, we're working on a limit. We're gonna, <laughs> wow, they are fighters. We're gonna have some good meals here tomorrow. Um, I'll cook these up, but beautiful fish. High Sierra brown trout, French Meadows pays off again. This is awesome. Didn't get any better than that. This one, this one gobbled that night crawler down. He swallowed it really deep, so good deal. We need three more and we're out of here. We'll be back after this week's tactical tip. As the longtime editor of the Fish Niffer magazine, I've had quite a few people ask me about the line I use for trout fishing, so I thought I'd take a moment to go over it. Here's the actual rod you see me fishing up at French Meadows. This is a rod I was using to fish the worms. It's a Cousin Tackle, seven foot six spinning rod. Um, I've got an Abu Garcia Cardinal reel on there. And what you see is I've got it spooled up with moss green, eight pound test, trilene big game line. Now, I don't spool up with fluorocarbon line because fluorocarbon sinks and I'd rather have my line either float a little bit or have neutral buoyancy for most applications. Um, I use the moss green for invisibility. I don't use clear line because I'm really trying to match the color of the line to the color of the background. You think about the bottom of a lake, it's, it's going to be mossy, it's going to be greenish, so I want the line to blend in with the background. Now. On the leader, I like to run with fluorocarbon line. And what I was using up at French Meadows, I was using this Trilene 100% fluorocarbon and 10 pound test. Now, in speaking with the engineers at Berkeley, I've learned that fluorocarbon line reflects light at roughly the same rate as 
water does. So it renders it nearly 100% invisible to the fish, and that's important. Back in the old days, before we had fluorocarbon line, to get total you know, invisibility when the fish were really finicky, we'd have to drop down to liter material that was maybe four pound test, maybe even two pound test. And as you can imagine, you hook a big fish on that, or you're dealing with some rocks and other cover like you are when you're bank fishing, you can have a hard time landing a fish and you can break off some really big fish and, and nobody likes to do that. Since fluorocarbon is virtually invisible to fish, it allows me to use heavier leader material. These days I use eight or 10 pound test and it works great. Um, the fish can't see it. I get just as many strikes as I used to get on the lighter line. And when I'm fighting fish or when I'm landing fish especially, and when I'm bank fishing, you know, you often don't have a net, and even if you did, the water's shallow, it doesn't work that great. A 10-pound leader, I can grab the leader, I can lift the fish, unless they're super big, or I can drag them right up on the bank. Um, I land them, I don't lose them, they can't see it. Invest in some fluorocarbon. Don't spool up with it, just use it for leader material. You want to spool up with standard monofilament or copolymer line, and uh, you'll do great. Now speaking of tackle, on our last show, episode three, I did a tackle hunt. I left some tackle out in the woods, I put up some GPS coordinates, and we had an angler go out there and recover that gear. A fellow lives about 30 miles from me, his name is Mike. He took up the challenge, he went out in the Tahoe National Forest and he found that tackle. Um, he took home a nice Abu Garcia round bait caster, a mess of crankbaits from Berkeley, and a fish sniffer hat, a camel hat. So that was pretty cool, congratulations Mike. I'll be hiding some more tackle real soon, so keep watching future episodes and you might be the lucky winner next time. So you look out behind me here at the lake and it's just glassy flat. It's beautiful, but this is one of the toughest times to catch trout. High sky, no cloud cover, and when the lake goes to glass, they can get very skittish and they're very difficult to catch. We've got a couple fish on a stringer, probably going to give this another hour or so. There's the occasional fish still hitting bugs on top, but overall, if we don't get breeze, it's going to be pretty difficult fishing throughout the rest of the day. But we'll stick with it for about another hour, and uh, then we've got some other commitments in town, so we've got enough fish for a meal, so we'll see what happens. Fishing the West with Kel Kellogg is brought to you by Penn Fishing Tackle, Abu Garcia Big Game Reels, Cousins Tackle, Premium American Fishing Rods, and the Fish Sniffer, the premier source for West Coast fishing information since 1982. Got a nice fish here on the worm. He's snagged on the bottom. We'll see if he works it out. We saw some really big fish in the water, so got my fingers crossed. Okay. Sometimes when you get a fish hung up like this when you're bank fishing, the best thing you can do is give him slack. The fish is hooked. We'll see if he'll get it out. There's some things we can do. If the fish doesn't get it out, I'll try walking left and right up the shore, but you don't just want to pull on it and break him off. So we'll see if we can get this fish out. I'm actually going to give him free spool. Well, that was a productive morning of fishing. I landed two nice fish, I lost a big one in the rocks, and I missed a couple other bites. I saw some really nice fish swimming by, so I'm likely going to come back up here. I think I'm going to do an afternoon trip, maybe come up here about 3 o'clock and fish until dark. But until then, um, I'm heading home. I'm going to have a nice trout uh, dinner tomorrow. And uh, all in all, it was a great day at French Meadows Reservoir. Hi folks, Kel Kellogg here, coming to you from my kitchen again. I was up at French Meadows Reservoir yesterday and I came home with two nice brown trout. I've got them laid out here on the counter. Um, I was out in my yard all day chopping brush and I'm really tired, I'm hungry, but I'm gonna have a good healthy dinner. It's my, one of my favorite recipes for trout. It's super simple. My good buddy Jim English showed me this method and uh, this is how I do it. I'm gonna barbecue these trout in a foil bag. So let's get to it. Here are the trout. Two beautiful browns. Uh, this one's about 14, 15 inches long. This one's a little smaller. And what I have here is a bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. Just gonna shake that up a little bit. Take off the cap. I'm gonna squirt a little bit of this in the cavity of the fish, like so. Squirt a little bit inside of this one. Now you would think 
that that's going to make that fish taste like barbecue sauce, but it's not. It just gives it a wonderful sweet flavor. It uh, it takes away any fishy flavor. I'm going to toss some toss some lemon on top of this. It's like that. Nothing fancy. Just give it a little a little citrus and. Uh, that can actually kind of be in there like that because I'm going to wrap this up. I'm just going to make a foil envelope out of this, like that, and like this. And I may actually even add another la layer of uh, a foil to that. I uh, probably don't need to. Something like this. And you can wrap it up pretty tight, like so fish in there nice and secure. Now what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to put this on the barbecue. I'm going to put it on a fairly hot grill. I'm going to put it on for about five minutes per side. I'm going to serve this with some broccoli and uh, maybe some sweet potatoes. Um, I'll see if I have a sweet potato. I'm not sure if I have one. But uh, that meat is just going to flake off the bone. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be tasty. Um, I can't wait to eat and it's and it's going to be healthy and it's going to be fast. So there you go. I'm going to head outside and heat up my grill. I'm going to pop on the fish and when it's done I'm going to plate it and I'll give you a look at it. It's going to be really good. I can't wait to eat. Okay, there we go. That's the larger of the two trout. I took off the head and the tail. The skin came off with the foil. Pink meat. I've got some steamed broccoli there. It was fast. It's going to be tasty. Very nutritious. Um, I can't wait to eat. Well, there you have it. That was quick, simple, and I know it's going to taste great. The next time you've got a couple of trout, give this recipe a try. It's fast. It's simple. Your house doesn't smell like fish. Um, I think you're really going to like it. Catch me next time on Fishing the West with Kel Kellogg. Please make some comments and share this channel with your friend and like my videos. Thanks for the support, folks. Kel Kellogg, signing off.